Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. What is going on? You can't run a question like that. We're stopping service. For the first time ever, Chef Ramsay takes on a Mexican restaurant. This is the burrito here. It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. Where the food is being made for the masses. What were they expecting? 2000 for dinner. But eaten by few. The owners. Paddy, I'm disgusted. Yolanda, that's a joke. And managers. It's a fucking prize! Seem to be on a siesta. Look at them! And only wake up when they argue with each other. Oh my god. I don't even know what could make it worse at this point. What do I do now? Where do I go, Vic? I'm this far from giving up. Could this be the one that leaves Chef Ramsay speechless? I never thought it was gonna be this bad. Maybe I'm too late. West Nyack, New York, 30 miles outside of New York City, an eclectic town that lies west of the Hudson River. West Nyack is home to Vic and Yolanda Flores, who previously owned another Mexican restaurant that failed. They wanted to try again, but didn't have the money, so they asked Yolanda's daughter, Patty, to use her credit and savings. I'm 100% owner on paper, but my stepfather, Vic, controls everything. All right. He didn't listen to me, he didn't listen to my daughter, he does whatever he wants to do. We have to discuss the problems. But discuss the problem, we go on and on. I thought this was a big opportunity, but from day one, it turned out to be a disaster. It's so tough, I can't chew it. <laughs> Initially, we were busy, and then after a while, it just, the number started dwindling. Is it normally this quiet? So I said, maybe we should make some changes. And he said, everything's fine. I've been thinking of changing the menu, but my husband say people like it. <laughs> but how many people? We spend so much time just looking out the window, staring at each other. So how many tables are there? Not you know. Figuring what can we do to bring people in. It's like the blind leading the blind. He always thinks that he's right. He'll decorate the way he wants to. It looks like. Tijuana threw up in here. He has a stuffed chili pepper that he moves around named Manuel. That makes fun of me. The most that bothers me is that my daughter um, has ruined her credit. I have to go cover a bounced check or something. She has a problem in her marriage. I, I just feel very guilty that I put Patty in uh, this position. I never thought it was going to be this bad. Well, I realized it was bad, and we can't pay our, our bills. I resent my mother. Um, I think she put her husband before me, and it's hurtful. I'm just hoping to God that Chef Ramsey will help us, and um, that Vic will listen to him. Otherwise, our personal lives are going to be changed drastically. Right, there's the sign, but grill 303. What the fuck is that? Maybe I'm too late. Grill, fiesta sunrise. Oh dear, oh dear. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Grill 303 or Not a fiesta? fiesta? Fiesta sunrise. Okay, good. Fiesta sunrise. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I thought it was too late. I thought it was the new restaurant already. Oh, well, we don't change the, the little logo on the front. You haven't changed the logo on the front? No. And it's been like that for how long? Or a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. OK. Right. Jesus, what's that? This is a new uh, favorite of margarita we have in here. So it's complimentary? Complimentary, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So you don't have to buy for drinks, you just come up here and... Well, you know, when the people, they come in, we try to be, you know, mm -hmm. give us something to appetize her to start. Mm. It's too strong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Tequila. Mm. Right, that's put some warm on my balls. Okay. Yes. Should we sit down? Please. Excellent. Come. So that's free. Right. Wow. Look at the size of this place. So how many seats have you got there? 120. 120. 120. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. How many's booked for lunch? Two tables. Okay. What would you recommend? The combination number one. 
Number one combination. Right. One Where's taco, it? you have one taco, one burrito, and one enchilada. Okay. Yeah, I'll try one of the fajitas as well. Okay. I'm hoping that Chef Ramsey kicks me his back. What is that on there? Looks like I've got a sticker on my menu. Just trying to peel it off and it's bugging me. Ah. The art of Mexican cooking. What is that under there? The name of the... What name is that? It was uh, my another restaurant that, that I used to have. Fiesta Garibaldi. Fiesta Garibaldi? Yes. So you brought the old menus from the old restaurant into the new restaurant and stuck some sellotape on there? Exactly. Yes. And is that restaurant still open? No, we closed. And you called it Fiesta Sunrise as opposed to Fiesta Garibaldi? Correct, yes. Uh, I'm really confused for you. Same chef? Same chef. Same ingredients? Same ingredients. You brought the ingredients from the old restaurant into this restaurant? Oh, uh, well, you know, different. We buy in fresh, you, you, but you the same. Fresh same ingredients? Menu. Yes, correct. Ooh, one for that. This is your combination, okay? Lovely. It's very hot plate, be careful. This is the burrito here. Yeah. It's hard to see that. It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. <laughs> Chicken's so dry. It tastes like it's been cooked weeks ago. The beef. Mm. Excuse me. It's impossible to swallow. I can see he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Wow. How old is the rice? It looks like it's... Left over from Christmas. They cooked this uh, yesterday. Yesterday? How do you know that? I check in the kitchen. Check again for me, would you please? Thank you. It looks older than fucking me. What does No le gustó. It's dreadful. Absolutely fucking dreadful. How's it going? He hated the rice. Why? It's old. How old is it? They're disgusting. Yeah. Basically, they taste of shit. I was feel very embarrassed. First of all, there was the menu, and the more important thing that was the food. That is gross. Oh, now it's my fault. No, no, I'm just now asking you. Oh, no. So we bought the glasses from Gary Baldy as well. We Wait. invested a lot of money into this. We should have known this shit a year and a half ago. Yeah. Maybe that's the key when you're coming to Fiesta Sunrise. Stop off at the tequila bar, get drunk, and then enjoy the food. You know why you listen to me? Hi, Hello. how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you both? Good, I'm nice. Patty. And your husband and wife? I'm stepdaughter. Oh, okay, so I thought you said you were partners. Excuse me. We're, right. we're all partners. Okay, yeah, great. Nice to meet you. Likewise, and first name is? Yolanda. Yolanda. Right. I was the Puyo Colada. That was delicious. Sad, that is the only thing that I enjoyed. Um, Let's go over to the bar and have a little right, chat, right, yes? Right. I'm hoping Chef Ramsay will convince Vic that change is good. You know, I think they're stuck in their ways. We should have stepped in a long time ago. Now it just seems like this is the end of our rope. Hopefully we can make some type of changes to save this business. All three of you pay yeah. for the business? No, this two. This two. <laughs> you two pay for the business yes. and this man runs it? He ruins it. Ruins it, runs <laughs> it, runs it. Runs it or ruins it? Yeah, so far it's fucking ruined, yeah? Did you have anything to do with the old business? I didn't. No. No. I did. You did. So that restaurant failed, and then you came to run this one for your wife and your stepdaughter. Yeah. But before you left, you grabbed the chicken, the menus, and the glasses. No, just the menu. OK. I'm trying to get my head around this. If you all own it, and he's running it, why aren't you involved? My opinion is, I think he just wanted us to finance him a restaurant. I put a lot out here. I put my credit, my home. I borrowed money from my father-in-law. It's not important to him. It's not important to him to make things right with me. What does it take to break even? How much do we need to take a week to break even? 90,000. A month. A, a month, yeah. A month, so 22 grand a week. We do a third of that. So you're losing half a million dollars a year. What's the debt? About 850. 850,000. And you've only been open for 18 months. Right. What in the fuck have you been doing? No, I'm the big guy in here. Everything is going wrong. They're picking at me. Oh, I will see you later. Thank you, ladies. See you later, chef. Vic. That's embarrassing. Right now, they're all blaming each other, and 
it's bloody obvious that Vic has run the place into the ground, but how can the women complain about that if they haven't put the time and effort in this place? So, personally, they're all to fucking blame. Coming up, Chef Ramsay uncovers the most disgusting... Oh, my God. ...horrifying... Look at the fat. ...and repulsive restaurant... What the fuck is that? ...that he's ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're stopping service. And later, tensions finally reach a boiling point. I pay my bills. I pay your bills, too. Your bills. Could this be the restaurant that just can't be saved? I'm this far from giving up. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. This restaurant's run with dysfunctional management, and I'm dying to find out how the kitchen actually functions, because how is it possible for someone to cook food so bland as that? And tonight, I'm going to find out, but I'm not eating again, that's for sure. Do you like some appetizer? OK. Wow, look at the size of this kitchen. It's huge. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Gordon. OK. In there, what's, the, what's that in there? The terrible fridge. Holy crap. Oh. oh, shit. When was the last time this was cleaned out? Yesterday. Um, what's this? The other rice. The famous rice? Yeah. That's the fresh rice, is it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I got served the old ship, yeah? What's this one? Where's that one from? Yesterday. Which one's the fresh one? I was disappointed a bit in the cooks. It, it seems like I see this place for the first time. Hi, how are you? Can I get the chicken enchiladas, please? Okay. When were these done? Yesterday. Yesterday? Fuck off, Vic. Please. They weren't done yesterday. OK. You can ask him his own language. And ask him very, very quickly, when were these cooked? Cuando cocinaron eso? Bien. Oh, so this one's from last week? Of course they're from last week. They don't look like they're from oh, fucking lunchtime, do they? These chips are cardboard. The tasteless have no taste whatsoever. OK. Oh, my God. Look at the fat. Look. Why is there so much disgusting fat on there? What's wrong with those chips? I take only one. You say that it's a little crispy. So you take them from the table back into the drawer. Did you see that? They come back from the table and you put them back into the drawer. Oh, he said he didn't touch it. He touched one. He said he touched one. But you're not supposed to. Fuck me. We're like a bunch of children that are doing the wrong thing. What are these? Vic. Yes, chef. These were fresh chives. Sell by date. Five months old. Where do you find that? I found them in the fucking fridge. Smell them. Vic. Look, let me just show you something. What is that? I'm getting nervous now. Talk to me. What is this? That's the fish we're using. That's the fish you're using? Oh, fuck me. Smell that in there. Is this today's fish? No, um, no. The fish, that was really scary because it was smelling bad already. I just couldn't believe it. Where's Patty? Yeah? Have a look at this. Oh, my God. What? Look how crispy and curled up it is. Just touch that. Oh, it, it, it's, like, solidified. What's this here? This is tank chip. Why is it all wrapped up in tinfoil? Look at the colour of it. It's oxidised. And what's that in there? It's pieces of pork. That's pork. What have you done to it? Why is it all stuck in there with blood at the bottom of the tray? Why is that? How old is this stuff? Yesterday. Yesterday? He said Friday. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> When's all this from? Friday. He took it out Friday. Oh. Everything's Friday. Look, let me just show you something. Look how green and slimy it is. That's from Friday. Look. Look at that. That's from Friday. 
Look at my fingers. Friday. Look. Look. There you go. That's from Friday. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. No muy saludable. Thank you. What is going on in here? A hungry cat would walk away from that. I was mortified. I felt embarrassed for letting this go on for so long. While customers in the dining room continue to eat subpar food, Chef Ramsay's kitchen investigation intensifies. What is going on here? What's that? The burrito. What's that one? The chicken enchiladas. Oh, how? Oh, my God. What's that? That was the ground beef. Ground beef? Half of it's fucking fat, you idiot. It's fatter than you. I felt satisfied that finally somebody called him out on his bullshit. Oh, shit. What's that? The bean. Oh, how? It's like a cement mixer. Are you fucking stupid? Who's controlling this? I am, Chef. You are. You are a walking disaster. Now I'm feeling like, like stupid. Lift it up. The fridge is full of shit. It, it's disgusting. I wasn't here on Saturday, but what were they expecting? Fucking 10,000 customers for lunch? Paddy, I'm fucking disgusted. Yolanda, that's a joke. I understand. I don't want people to get sick, and I don't want them to spread the word that food is bad here. You're overstaffed, underworked, shit food. I wouldn't trust you running a bar, let alone a fucking restaurant. You must be out of your tiny mind. I don't care for your restaurant. I want to take that out there. I dare you. Take it out there. Go on. Give it to them. Yeah, there you go. It's with me. Look at me. Why wouldn't you take it out there? That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Why are you serving it? You don't fucking care. Why? Why? Because you're serving that and trying to charge people money for that. That's why you don't care. I care for You don't care shit. No fucking way. Fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry, but we're stopping service. Shocked by disgrace. What is going on here? After disgrace. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. After disgrace. I want to take that out there. Chef Ramsay had seen enough and took matters into his own hands. You don't fucking care. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. But we're stopping service. Everything you've had to drink, eat so far is all on the house. Sir? That thing in your hand, put it down. If you'd just seen where it's come from, like I have, you wouldn't be eating it. Very sorry. Close up. No pill anywhere. I was like, what the hell are you doing? You can't do that to my customers. By the way, there's your refried beans on the way out. Have a look at it. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. And uh, seeing all these people walking out of the restaurant, it was like, this is the end. I think Vic got a dose of reality. He walked around like he was untouchable. So I was relieved that finally somebody else told him that he was responsible for a lot of this. While Vic supervises the cleanup, Chef Ramsay spends his time with a woman who is torn between her daughter and her husband. What I'm really concerned about is what's happening to your daughter. How did it start? Because something's blurring for me. My credit was messed up, so we used party for her credit. Right, too. she was clean. Cleared, yeah. You've destroyed your daughter's credit because now she has no choice. I mean, yes. you and her are in the shit, my darling. I know, sometimes I can sleep at night. Do you love Vic? I do, but it's different now, you know. No, before you came here, I said, if this doesn't work, I don't think you and I could be together anymore. Who's more important, your daughter or your husband? My daughter. At this point, you know, I realize it's not, not really a choice. Right now, the only way to show Paddy how much you care is to get involved. Yes. To help turn this business around. Oh, you tell me what to do. 
Another marriage that is affected by Fiesta Sunrise's debt is Patty and Dawn's. Usually, Dawn drops her off to avoid running into Vic, but on this occasion, Patty asked him to come in and meet Chef Ramsay. Good to see you. Good to see you. I want to save the relationship with my husband because he's really angry at me for getting involved, and it just seems to be spiraling out of control. Um, obviously, um, Paddy explained, I'm absolutely furious in terms of the way the kitchen was run, the way the place has been abused, and I can't believe a guy like Vic would try to do so much under your own eyes without even you knowing anything about it. Are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. He saw it coming, and I said, no, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, and he said he's, he's not who he appears to be. No. That he's taking advantage of you yeah. and your mom. Yeah, you know, even mum admitted last night that you had a clean credit record. Oh my goodness. So that it's, got it's, that it, got abused. That's in the well, cover. That's one thing I'm mad at. You know, money um, can always be made and be paid back. Yeah. The credit, he just never paid the, the monthly payment on. Do you think you can get more involved in terms of the support mechanism? Oh, sure. When I saw Diane, my reaction it was like, oh, this is Patricia's husband. This is nothing to do in the business. I have. Sit down. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, Vic. I'm trying to understand the madness and to how we've been operating. When you knew you were borrowing all that money from family, why weren't you being more honest about where the money was going? Do you know? God, oh, it's not you... clear. Now it is. But when I asked him, are you going to give Patty any money? No, no, I don't think so. That really doesn't cut it. I believe Don's trying to stand up for me. He feels that Vic walks all over me. You're not going to give my wife any money? You're going to walk I, away I, with all the cash? Are you going to go and sell huh? them? I paid your mortgage here, you jerk off. One month, I paid $50,000, oh you douchebag. You don't even have a job. I don't have a job? What are you doing? Pal, I got Pal. a job. Oh, please, you're hunting. You're fishing. This is your, your job. I have downtime. I do what I want. Oh I pay my, my bills, God. pal. I pay yeah. my bills. And in fact, yeah. I pay your bills, too. What bills? Relax, 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 While Patty and Don were discussing their financial situation... Are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. Vic joined the conversation. Sit down. Accusations were made. You don't even have a job. And Don and Vic were at war. I don't have a job. I pay my bills. In fact, I pay your bills too, what bitch. Bills? What? Ah! Relax, 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 what? Relax, relax, what? What? Relax, 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 relax. Uh, okay, now, now, outside. Oh. Relax, it's relax, done, relax, outside, huh? outside, outside, outside. Let's go, let's go. You can't say that. You can't start talking about that. You can't start telling that. You can't. This ain't even half this shit. I'm upset. My husband really wanted to help, and he's probably going to be mad at me for putting him in a situation like this also. So, in a way, I'm mad. I'm here to help this place turn around. But to make this work, all three of you have to work as a team. While the family cools off, Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to come up with a game plan to fix the restaurant's biggest problem, the food. Oh, my God. What in the fuck is that? That is a fucking joke. Victor. Right, ladies. I want us all to get involved in doing something together. Yeah? So I wanted a little fun element. You make a burrito, you make a burrito, you make a burrito, and the best one goes on the menu tonight. That's what I wanted to do. I couldn't do it because of these little fuckers here. Look at them. Oh, my God. I'm so sick to my stomach. I want to throw up because I had coffee here earlier. I don't know if the roach went through my cup. I didn't know about this problem either. Two dishwashers, two prep cooks, Who's cleaning around here? Do they seriously put food on those plates? Vic's here seven days a week. I don't know how he didn't realize the problems in the kitchen. Can't you see these? I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to get going, but every time I put my foot on the ladder, I get knocked back. Did you know this was like this? I noticed, I noticed, but... Uh, you I knew, knew it? it? Yeah. 
We're going to have to do something that we cannot open. I need an exterminator here. How can I start even attempting to cook when the place is festered with cockroaches? I didn't expect this. I don't think it could get worse. I don't even know what could make it worse at this point. After Chef Ramsay's dirty discovery, he immediately called in an exterminator. I had no idea things were that bad. Bloody hell. I'm pulling my hair out now. I'm sorry, but you're running the place. Sorry. Oh, you're so stupid. Where do I go, Vic? I feel embarrassed with Chef Ramsay. Yeah. I don't think that uh, we can make it in this restaurant. You can't run a fucking restaurant like that. You think I'm not? I'm, I'm fucking embarrassed You now. should be fucking embarrassed. I'm not putting one foot in that place until that place is fucking clean. Yes? You're right. Now you start getting those guys cleaning, yes? Yes, sir. With some fucking pride! Do you understand the word pride? Yes. It's not possible for someone to have his head so far in his arsehole. Fuck me. I was feeling so depressed because all the pressure that I have right now in the, in the restaurant and everybody picking everything about me. You know, he always thought he was right. Now he finally knows all of his mistakes. I'm very sorry, I'm very wow. sorry. I don't mean to hurt your feelings and I don't mean to hurt Danny's feelings. I'm very sorry. After taking time to reassess the situation and allow the exterminator to finish, Chef Ramsay returns more determined than ever. We are not giving up. Do you understand? We cannot give up. Tonight we're going to open. The place has been cleaned. We're prepping up now. And in under two hours' time, we'll be in a position to open up. And then we work it together. Yes, sir. Yeah, are you going to listen? Yes. Due to last night's shutdown, Chef Ramsay was unable to experience a normal dinner service. Tonight, with the old food a thing of the past, he can finally observe the staff at work. Tonight is all about fresh food. Everything we prepped this morning, we cooked tonight fresh, yes? Yes, sir. Fresh. What is it? Fresh. Louder. Fresh. You may be small, but you've got a big pair of lungs. Fresh. Fresh. <laughs> they speak English. They're just being clever by ignoring me, yes? Yeah. yeah, I know that. What do you guys like to drink? I'm gonna get the chicken and fajitas. And one beef enchilada. Thank you. With customers in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is anxious to impress them with something Fiesta Sunrise has never had. Fresh food. Bloody hell. Get me Yolanda, please. Fucking hell. Yolanda, you cook at home, don't you? Yes. Yeah? What's wrong with this? Overcooked. Absolutely right. It's mush. We've got four chefs in the line. Not one of them can cook rice. The cooks don't even know what they're doing. I realize how bad it is today. I think you should start spending some time in here. Yeah. Can you cook rice now, Yolanda? Yes, sir. It's like a fucking golf ball. It's been a while, huh? With the rice disaster, the kitchen is now backed up, and the customers are getting restless. Four chefs on the line. Yep. Doesn't seem to be happening fast. Yeah, can you speed up a little bit? Starving. <laughs> I just wish I had my food. Soon, the guys, we have four people over here. We have to start moving. What is these guys doing? They don't even know who is who's the leader over there. We're finished with our meals, and the rest of our table hasn't even received their meals. Yeah, yeah I know. Service, please. Pass it over. What's those black bits coming from the... From the top. From the top of the broiler. Yeah. Jesus Christ almighty. When was the last time the broiler was cleaned? The chefs that now is... They are crazy now. And this, like, this place is half full. What are you going to do when it's crowded and there's people waiting outside? This is unbelievable. What the fuck's happening? When was the broiler cleaned last, gentlemen? If he fucking tells me Friday one more time, I'll boil him. Every Sunday, they say. Every Sunday, my fucking ass. 
this is out of control. I mean, you got food, I'm you got fishy food. I've got four chefs that can't cook fucking rice, soot all over the food. What is going on? Fuck me. You're supposed to put salt on the food, not fucking soot. It's a joke. You're going? You're going to just leave? You're not going to last here. You can't employ these guys. One can't fucking clean, one can't cook rice. I never imagined how bad this restaurant was doing. I don't know what else could happen. I cannot come to terms with what the fuck's happening. On the heels of another dreadful dinner service, Chef Ramsay knows he's running out of time to save this restaurant. Hard day today. What we took tonight, couldn't even afford to pay for the staff. That's how it is every day. Tonight is a perfect example that you're digging yourselves a bigger hole. We're tightening the noose around our necks. I, I, I've never been in this situation before. I'm now going to start taking drastic measures. We need help. A lot of help. A lot of help. I'm going back to New York City now, yeah? I have got to think of, uh, you know, an idea. Or we're screwed. I'm this far from giving up. Next, this place needs help. Despite Chef Ramsay's many improvements. I have an expert that's going to be here to help you. Now you have one beautiful <gasps> restaurant. Oh my God. Look at it. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. Will you tell that chubby face of yours? Does this restaurant have what it takes to make it? No more mistakes. Or is Fiesta Sunrise just beyond repair? Something's burning. What's going on, guys, please? This is idiot proof, and they still can't execute it. Holy fuck. Chef Ramsay stayed up most of the night in New York City trying to think of something or someone to help salvage Fiesta Sunrise. He returned the next day, reinvigorated with a comprehensive plan. Right, good morning. Good morning. morning Come round. After last night's dinner service, this place needs help. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I have an expert, okay, that I've taken care of that's going to be here to help you. She has the number one Mexican restaurant in Manhattan currently. She's from Mexico and she seriously knows her Mexican cuisine. Oh. Say hello, please. Juliet. Balesteros, come and say hello, please. This is Yolanda. Hi. Yeah, one of the owners. If I got the call from Chef Ramsey, I got very excited. I will only do this for him. Vic, the gang is up on you now. One, two, three, four against one now. You're outnumbered, big boy. Woohoo! I was pleasantly surprised when Chef Ramsey introduced Julieta because we really need the help. With the kitchen in good hands, next, Chef Ramsay reveals the work his design team did to modernize the restaurant. Oh my God! Come through, come through, come through. Now, look at it. <sighs> we got rid of the clutter. The ugly white banquet chairs have gone. Look what you can see now when you look down through there. It matches perfectly. Look at the tablecloths. Oh my God, look! Oh, I love it. I'm in shock. The shutters. Beautiful. All the crap gone off the ceiling. The walls have been done. That glass the walls is gone. gone. Stunning. Beautiful. Now you have one beautiful Mexican restaurant. Chef Ramsey is unbelievable. I can't believe that he worked all night to do all this. I used to get dizzy walking in here. I used to turn my stomach, and now I feel calm. And it looks like a place you'd want to stay and hang out and spend some time. Take a look at it. I love my new decoration. I love my chairs. I love my new place. Thank you very much. I just want you to run it, yeah, with your wife, with your daughter, and run it as a team. That's all I want. I promise to you, after this, no more mistakes. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Having updated the look, okay. Chef Ramsay moves on to the most significant change in his master plan for saving the restaurant. We've brought in an expert for the kitchen. We've revamped the dining room. And now the most important change that will be significant in turning this business around, and that's the menu. Do you like the new cover? No. 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 Good, because that's what it's not going to be. There we go. Oh. 
That's what their menu is going to be. Simple, elegant, easy to read, easy to control, and maintain consistent standards. Uh, have a quick look. I'm very excited. I'm happy. Beautiful menu. Read over the menu. I'm going to spend some time in the kitchen with Juliet, yes? OK. Let's go, my darling. In order to ensure a successful relaunch, Chef Julieta stays on top of everything and everyone in the kitchen. The taquitos, just crispy enough to be like to have a crunch on your mouth, but don't, don't overcook them. I honestly never ever expected to be here tonight, relaunch night. What a fucking week. The toughest so far. So now they have to pull it off. They may have the best Mexican chef from Manhattan, but it's up to them now. Everything's here, they've got to do it. Let's see our meat. Oh, look, that's beautiful. Now that you've got it, you run it. And I'll be watching the service. Tonight is crunch time. This restaurant has to have a successful service tonight. OK, anything to say? I hope we work together as a team, because I want something to be proud of, and I'm proud of my family, and I'm happy. Everything is changed. Good. Ready? Ready. We're opening in five minutes. Smile! It's good. I'm <laughs> That's excited. You can get as big as it can. You're like a sumo wrestler upside down. Smile! <laughs> With a contemporary new look and simplified menu, the success of Fiesta Sunrise now rests on the staff. I'm excited, but I just want everything to go OK. So I hope they could pull this off. You want appetizers? Well, then we can take the guacamole. Mmm, that's good. It's for a kid, it's for a little girl, so don't put any peppers. They need somebody to be in charge. They need guidance, but they're willing to learn. Medium rare. Y este que está algadito, ponlo para el medium. Chef, it says kind of cold. It went in, uh, oh, come on. Julieta. What happened? They said it's cold. Cold. Yeah, because it's hanging around. Okay, uno nuevo en 20 segundos, por favor. Everything's set up. Everything's set up, so you know this is idiot proof, and they still can't execute it. It's quite a worry. Come on, guys. Something's burning. In yeah, the yeah, yeah. They burned the nachos. They burned the nachos. What's going on, guys? Please. How the fuck do we burn natural? Holy fuck. Holy fuck. What's this? Nachos flambe. After a shaky start, Bloody hell. the pressure is now on Vic to get the restaurant running smoothly. This is excellent. This is good? very good. Presentation is beautiful. Dos carnes asadas, medium red, uno no arroz. Good. What do you think about the salsa? I like this. It has a nice texture. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy. For the first time, I see the people they're smiling. They're talking good things about the restaurant, especially about the food. It's a good piece of chicken. I really like the cafeteria. This is delicious. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. For the first time since it opened, Fiesta Sunrise is functioning properly. But they have one more hurdle to clear before the night can be considered a success. I just had a phone call. The mayor. Of Nyack's coming. The mayor? Yeah, the mayor. Oh. Yeah, great. Great. So he's arriving for dinner tonight. Wonderful. Great. Fantastic. We had the honor of having our local mayor visit us. Hi, how are you? Fabulous. You good? I was a little nervous because yeah. I wanted him to enjoy our new food and recommend it because it's some exposure locally. Hello, senores. Thank you for coming. Can I offer some appetizer? We'll get one of each appetizer. OK. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. And put it all out put here, all right? Out here, Thank you. Vic, make sure that mayor's OK. Make sure he has a jolly time, yes? What is this? Taquitos, uh, the appetizer. <laughs> Excellent. The taquitos, the best. Yeah, that was delicious. I'm coming back for those. <laughs> <laughs> it was excellent food. We had a great evening tonight. I would absolutely come here again. Cheers. Cheers.
Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. With dinner coming to a close and the mayor satisfied, Fiesta Sunrise finally saw a glimmer of hope. Can you believe we made it to tonight? No. Yeah. Extraordinary. I don't even know where to begin thanking Chef Ramsey. He came to me as a gift because I was really at the end of my rope and he brought back happiness between all of us and I, I can never thank him enough. I honestly never, ever, ever thought we we're going to make it to tonight. You know that. Everybody had to wake up to get where we are now. Yes, yeah. sir. And Vic, 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 after all the mistakes you made and all the crap you're telling me, tonight, you were great. I was impressed with your performance tonight. I'll be honest, I was nervous. The tables, all the customers, everybody giving a good compliments about the food. Good. I was like so happy. For the first time since I arrived, I got to see your passion and your hunger to keep this place alive. That's what it's gonna take. And I'd like to say that tonight would not have been of any significant improvement without the help of Julieta. Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. We're doing this to give this place a hope. We all need to work as a team and as a family. Julieta, thank you personally. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. OK, go back a week when I arrived. I didn't know if I was in the right place. The signs with Grill 303. I couldn't understand what the hell was going on here. I thought I'd arrived too late. OK, come outside. Now, when we walk into the car park, yes, here's something that each and every one of your customers saw tonight. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, we did change it, so when they park in front of the restaurant, they know where they're eating. <laughs> What's it called? Yes, I can't hear you. Fiesta Sunrise, I still chef. can't hear you. Fiesta Sunrise, Chef. Good. Make sure it stays up there. We stay, the one that stayed over there. Fiesta Sunrise. You got one more this way. Oh, you can. Wow. Oh, my God, Chef. You did it. You did Fiesta Sunrise in front of them all. That's right, in front of them all. Every day, 25,000 cars go past this restaurant. How could all those people drive by every day for 18 months and you not take advantage of that. Are you mad? I'm happy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody that drove past here tonight saw that. I'm not kissing you. Yeah, I don't, I don't OK, good. You. Let's go. <laughs> OK. This is my American dream. And I think it's going to be one of the best Mexican restaurants in town. Keep it fresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. You can't create jack shit from here. Chef Ramsay goes head to head with Long Island's most arrogant chef. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. There will be no faults in what I produce. Whose business is clearly dying. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. No happy hour here. Is he sleeping over there? Just an early bird special. I feel like I'm in Florida. His girlfriend not only supports him. Fire 14. Her parents have put their life savings into the restaurant as well. Put my home, my retirement, and everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> but this guy doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. Oh, my God. How can you expect food if you're cooking this shit off? It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Can Gordon get through to him? I wish you got your ass kicked in a fucking kitchen. You should be ashamed. He can bust my balls, but the name on the awning is it's not Ramsey. Before he not only bankrupts himself. You sank half a million dollars into this shit? But his girlfriend's family as well. We're screwed. We should have never did this. One thing's for sure. There's a shocking conclusion that will change this family forever. I am out of it. I don't know what to do. I'm going to fucking knock somebody out. Great Neck, New York is an upscale community on the north shore of Long Island, where competition among Italian restaurants is fierce. Trobiano's has been struggling to survive for the past three years. Owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend's parents, they are now just months away from losing everything. My desire to own a restaurant 
Basically started right after culinary school, uh, working for other people. Look at that, huh? And then I said to myself, why am I busting my ass for everybody when I could be doing it for myself? Yeah, Joe, put a steak knife on there. Anthony came to me one day and says, this place is available, you want to buy it? I don't know if it took balls or I was just plain stupid doing it. They go right over me and ask him. Having a business together, you know, you see too much, you're together too much, there's resentment because of it. Appetizers, they go out or no? one minute. Tiff. I, I, I heard you. Me and Anthony have been together for six years. We used to never fight, ever. I thought he was like the best person in the world. And then we got here, I'm like, who am I going out with? I want a whole new fucking slip. We should have two. When it comes down to running the business, it's really Anthony that runs it. Hey, change the fucking ticket, bro. Come on. Fucking bitch. It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Fire 14. At the beginning, Trobianos took off. We didn't maintain the food coming out fast enough with quality. And from there, our business decreased. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. The early bird special was my idea. Any place you like. It's bringing in people to keep the boat afloat. How are we doing, folks? Everything all right? Forget about it. I feel like I'm in Florida. It's crazy. I'm working, killing myself to pay bills. I don't want to live like this. I don't. I don't really want to live this way anymore. It's depressing. I put my parents into this position. They were finally getting comfortable, and now they have no choice but to work, or they're going to lose everything. Anthony. He's only my daughter's boyfriend. I put my faith, I put my home, my retirement, my wife's well-being, everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it is my name on the awning. To think that my name is going down as well as the restaurant, that would definitely be disappointing. You guys have to run more food, okay? We are. More. The last three years have been rough. By this time in my life, I thought we would have been married, had kids already. If we don't get Chef Ramsay's help, there's no other options for us. OK, here we are. Oh, shit, it's for sale. No, that's an early bird dinner menu. $14.95. Fuck me, it's cheaper than the sub shop. Right, Trobianos. Here we are. Hello. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Gordon, please. First name is? Joe. Joe, good to see you. Very Continue. nice to meet you, Chef Likewise, Ramsay. Likewise, good Pat. to see you too. Nice Pat, to nice to see you. When Chef Ramsay came through that door, I thought it was a blessing. I think hopefully he'll put us straight. So, uh, who came up with the bright idea of opening a restaurant? You bought a restaurant with your future father-in-law. It was just an exciting thing, you know? You were able to purchase a restaurant as a dream of mine. How old are you now? 28? 29? Mm -hmm. So you were 25 when you opened it? Mm -hmm. Which is fucking young to open a restaurant. <laughs> sure. Yeah? Yeah. Felt that was ready. Ambitious, you know? And have you trained in Italian restaurants? No. I have not. I felt I knew everything. I still do. Are you that arrogant? Possibly. I wouldn't open a fucking Italian restaurant without working in one. I definitely think Anthony needs to hear that he's arrogant because I say it to him sometimes and he takes it as, oh, yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gobsmacked that a young man at the age of 25 would manipulate his future father-in-law to open an Italian restaurant having never worked in a fucking Italian restaurant. That doesn't make sense. No offense, I didn't pin him down and handcuff him and said, you, I need your house to put the restaurant. But you've got the house now. Chef Ramsay was, you know, making me feel like it's my fault that the restaurant ain't doing too well. Am I having enough pressure as it is? You guys are struggling to get married, and you've been married for a long time. You know, that level of pressure, how do you manage that? It's been rough because we can't do what we want to do anymore. We just can't do it. Tiffany? I hate it here. He'll get mad at me that I'm saying this, but I do. I don't like it here. It's not that I don't like working. I like your honesty. It's just hard yep. sometimes. Having Anthony and my parents as partners tends to be difficult. Anthony says one thing and then my parents say another, and you know, sometimes they clash. Whose idea was put that pathetic sign in the window? Me. <sighs> Bringing some sort of customers in, right? Yeah. It seems that everyone's in agreement with, you know, the light-hearted decisions made by one individual. What Chef Ramsay had to say to Anthony was on the point. Sitting back and just listening, you say to yourself, wow, what the hell are we doing? Why did we do this? I'll be back in an hour. Chef Ramsay feels one way and I feel another. And at the end of the day, the name on the awning is Trobianos. It's not Ramsay.
Trobianos has unfortunately become known for one thing and one thing only. It's inexpensive early bird special. How are we doing out? Beautiful. The restaurant is only minutes away from its nightly ritual. Hello, how are you? Were you early? Of course. <laughs> Put you right by the window. Oh my goodness gracious. One thing all the family agree on is that the food is great. And Anthony, well, he's certainly a confident guy. Now, I may be in for a treat. And right now, it's time for the early bird. Here we go. It's this good. is this is busy. Yes. Huh? Got there early, aren't they? 4.30. 4.30. Who eats there early, right? Wow. The decor matches the clientele. Drab, fuddy-duddy, yeah, and seriously old-fashioned. I feel like I've come to see my granny in a retirement home. I can't eat dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. Do you enjoy your dinner? Well, I'm sure. What would you recommend? The Trobiano salad is excellent. Uh -huh. It's chopped. Why would you chop it? People seem to love it. Is that because of their teeth? Maybe. The... <laughs> it must be a nightmare. Knife, fork, there spoon, and straw. Right. <laughs> I can't stand here. <laughs> Still need a few minutes? I know. I think I'm ready. All right. What would you Excellent. like? Uh, first thing, eggplant tower. OK. Then I'll have the chicken wrapped shrimp, please. Finally, some fish. What would you recommend? The salmon's fresh. It comes with potatoes and vegetables or pasta. Any pasta you like. But you wouldn't serve spaghetti with the salmon? Yeah, people get it all the time, because they like to take the pasta home, usually. Let's go for the salmon and spaghetti. What a nice. OK. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Two for one. What up? You got it. Is he sleeping over there? Is he? Shit. Here we go. Right here. Table 10's appetizers, please. All right. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. I feel that there will be no faults in what I produce for him. There you go. Wow. The eggplant tower? Oh, my God. <laughs> When Chef Ramsay's appetizer was coming out, you could see his face like, what is this shit? I said, oh my god, we're dead. That's definitely not homemade mozzarella. It's ghastly, stone cold, solid, and tasteless. How are you, madam? How was dinner? Fair. Fair. And what have you got in the bag? What is that? Eggplant parmesan cheese. Oh, lovely. When will you have this? For lunch tomorrow? Yeah. So you're not coming back tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Because you've got dinner there. Rock I like your forever. British accent. Thank you. I like your lipstick. <laughs> it's great spending time in the company of the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, bring it out. Wow. Chicken oh wrapped shrimp. Okay. Thank you. Chicken and shrimp. Well, I've got the chicken. And where's the shrimp? Bingo. I'm struggling with that. Looks like chicken. Tastes like shrimp or shit. Joe. They are solid. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. OK. You ready? Jesus. Oh, yes, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Your shrimp was too hard. Rock hard, like a bullet. OK. He says, why would you put shrimp inside of a chicken? He says, I don't get it. All right. When the first dish came back, I was, I, I was disgusted, pissed off. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him my cooking skills, you know, are up to par. Somebody please run this fucking food. That's a bolognese. Thank you. And there's a the salmon. Thank you. OK. Christ almighty. And dry. And absolutely hideous. Pretty silent, dry, okay. like really dry. Okay. Would you mind just? Um, Not a problem. Would you me. like another piece? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, Thank you. Your salmon was too dry. He don't want another piece. He said this was brutal. Here you go. You want to taste? It? Throw it out. When it came back, I was just too pissed off to even taste it. I was furious at Chef Ramsay saying that my food is shit. 
personally, I feel that it's the wrong opinion at this point. I'm fucking furious. I'm furious. Coming up, Chef Ramsay tries everything to get through to Anthony. Give me something, please. But he quickly finds out that Anthony feels he's too important to clean. You're telling me now that you don't clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Too confident to taste. Anthony, look at me. Taste. I just didn't want to taste it myself. And too stubborn to see that the relationships around him are on shaky ground. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it, but you have to. This arrogant chef may be the one that pushes Chef Ramsay over the edge. Oh, shit. I am out of there. And out the door. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. It's only 7 p.m. Early bird customers have now left, and at a time when restaurants are usually bustling, Trobiano's is empty. All is quiet, except it's time for the family to hear from Gordon. Let's have a chat uh, together, yeah? One thing that I was absolutely amazed with this evening is the size of the portions. When you serve an entree, you're serving a second entree with it. It's been confirmed to why we don't open for lunch, because you're serving the lunch the night before. So they're robbing you. However, that's not the biggest problem. The food, hideous. The Leaning Tower Pisa. What, what, what's going on there with that? The eggplant tower? What was wrong with it? That's not fresh mozzarella. I'm really sorry, that's processed. Commercial crap. <laughs> Salmon, did you see it when it went back to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Yeah. Just because you may have the inclination that I'm acting like a dick, it was dry. I don't think you're acting like a dick. I just didn't want to taste it myself. It's hard to hear him get yelled at, but Chef Ramsay, he knows what he's talking about, so he should listen to him. Every time a plate comes back to my kitchen, I taste it. And then the worst dish, the shrimp and the chicken. Where'd you go looking for the shrimp? Just seems unique. Now I'm even more concerned about what you're tasting. I thought you had a better palate than the fucking customers in there this evening. It was hideous. He can bust my balls about my ego, but you should not be killing me over my food. I know I'm a great chef. I don't think he knew what he was talking about. OK, I'm out of here. It's been a tough day for everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. 14.95. That's not easy, that, slapping a family in the face, especially when they're half a million dollars in debt, and it's tough. I honestly don't know if I can turn this around. Oh, dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know. We're so frustrated, we're so worn out, we're so yeah. beat up. We don't know what the fucking direction we're going anymore. Well, obviously we have to find the right direction because well, we're drowning well, very quickly. Maybe this was a godsend that he came here. Do you know what? There's no way I can sleep. I've got to get back to the restaurant and actually find out what this guy's kitchen's like. What's he working with before I start putting my plan together? As Gordon ventures into the kitchen, the family continues their post-dinner meeting. You need to take criticism better. I'm going to take criticism better. You're like, oh, these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You don't want to hear it. Right, you don't want to hear it, but you have to, though. Like, you got to take it and be like, maybe I am doing something wrong. This is shocking. When was the last time this was clean inside? My goodness me. Look at that. The floor is caked with grime. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. When was the last time this was clean? Bloody hell. Oh. Christ almighty. What on earth is that? Oh, the smell. You know what you do wrong? Just take more, take control. more control of these guys, and I feel that you don't. If you want me to take the control, don't go second guess me about anything that I do. Right behind there. Oh my god. Shit. Look at that there. That is mouse or rat droppings. Oh my god. A couple of hours ago, I was feeling slightly embarrassed for them, slightly concerned in a big way, but now, when a chef lets go of his kitchen like this, it proves he doesn't care. I want to be more involved in the business end of things. Forget the business aspect. Well, and your portion is the hosting portion. Hi there. 
Yeah. yeah. Go on. I was going back to the hotel, couldn't sleep, had a look in the kitchen, and I am absolutely fucking gobsmacked. How can you do that? And when that is? Say that again. What is that? What is that? Come here. Anthony, how can you cook in this? When was the last time this was cleaned? The kitchen? Oh, we try to do it on a daily basis, I mean. What? Have you seen under there? Underneath? Underneath here. Joseph, would you mind having a look? I don't think you've actually seen this. Down there. I see it. Look at that! Oh, God. Please, Anthony, talk to me. Give me some form of feedback. Don't bullshit me. Give me something, please. Well, they're asked to do it every day, the staff. They're what? They're asked to do it every day. We're on our ass with half a million dollars debt, and you're telling me now that you don't even clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Oh, my God. What's this, then? What's that on there? The droppings. They're not fucking caraway seeds. I wasn't unaware of them. Couldn't imagine it was been that bad. From the surface, everything looks nice and nice. When you start digging, I can't, just can't believe it. Isn't this your bedrock? Isn't this where it's all created from? You can't create jack shit from here. I swear to God, I don't think you give a fuck. You should be absolutely ashamed. Chef Ramsay came in like a bat out of hell and again just whipped the living crap out of me. There's only so much you, you could do or say. So why, Anthony? Give me something, please. Oh, my goodness, I love you. Come up with an answer, Anthony. Otherwise, I'm fucking out of here. I swear to God, I am fucking out of here. I can't take much more of this shit. Fuck it. You got no chance. I am out of there. I am out of there. Anthony's arrogance and his refusal to take responsibility for his kitchen have pushed Gordon to his breaking point. I am out of there. When Gordon Ramsay walked out, I said, that was it. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. I don't know what to do. Ramsay, you don't even want to help us. When I saw Chef Ramsay going out to the street, I was feeling a failure. I had to tell him how I felt and just not let this slip through our fingers. What the fuck's going on? Where do we stand? I want to get this place back. Why have you given up, then? Tell me. There must be a reason. Because on the ambulance in there, you gave up years ago. Anthony, that's your family in there, right? And each and every one of them believe in you, yeah? Don't you feel bad, honestly? Don't you wake up with sleepless nights? Yeah, I do. I do. Have you ever had that burden on your shoulders? Somebody's house? Not quite to this extent, no. I've been in the industry for 21 fucking years busting my balls. I've made mistakes, yeah? I've had failures, but fuck me. Have but I learned from to, it? Exactly. I'm trying to learn from it. Are you? Yes, I am. By that in there? Come on. Fucking, come on. Fucking, ah, uh, I think you've had it too easy. You want lucky fucking boys to get hold of this restaurant at 25. And I don't see that fucking level of humbleness. Slightly arrogant, fine. But a little bit of humility. You know that. Yeah. Chef Ramsay taught me you need to face reality. You need to realize that maybe you're not the only one involved in everything. Time to get humble and turn the corner. Let's go. We've just had a chat, and now we're going to clean. When that place is clean and you see the difference, you will respect it from a completely different level. Not just the kitchen, the ingredients. If that's not working, what chance have we got? Let's do it together. Oh, fuck. Let's go.
Go. When I seen Gordon Ramsay come back in, I said, oh, okay, there's still a little ray of hope. Declutter everything. We get rid of all the food first, yeah? We're going to give this place a really good clean. At this point, I'll do anything and everything that Chef Ramsay does suggest. He's definitely a, a shot of reality. He's kind of just snapping me back into place. After a stressful night, Gordon chooses an unlikely spot to introduce the family to the first of many changes. What, are we going to slaughter our own beef? <laughs> <laughs> this is one idea, OK, in order to separate your restaurant from any other Italian restaurant anywhere near Great Neck. What do we get from cows? Make Every the milk, the butter, yeah. cheese. What do we do with milk and cheese? What do we make? Uh, uh, no? Mozzarella, exactly. Uh, exactly that. Who's milked a cow before? No one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss Glamorous Pat. <laughs> gloves off, please. Gucci gloves off. Look at those gloves. Look. <laughs> you could have prepared me a little for this. Oh, my God. Nice and gentle now, yeah? Make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> ah, yeah! Ah, it's going on! Just try and keep it in the bucket, but... <laughs> this was so out there to milk your own cow. I feel like you really say something, but I'm... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm... I'm starting to get a little excited here. I never thought I'd see my wife milk a cow. She's over there playing with the others, going, uh, uh, uh. Come on, Tiffany, put both hands, please. Nothing's coming out. Oh, that's Tiffany. I'll just squeeze it. Oh, oh, my God, look at this. I can't believe I'm milking a cow. Oh, you've done that before. No, I just, I watch a lot of westerns. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anthony, put some muscle into it. This is running away. You're not blaming somebody else again, are you? Come on, you're the chef. <laughs> well done. OK, on the back of last night's scenario, just bringing you four together and having some fun was great because it looked like a family. Last night, everyone was in their own little turmoil, so today was really what we needed. This now needs to be pasteurized. We'll take it back and we'll start making our first ever fresh, homemade mozzarella. Ready? Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teats no, are not your strong point, no. right? <laughs> 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 Definitely. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Back at the restaurant, Gordon walks them through the process of making fresh mozzarella. Anthony, push all the way out so it gets really nice and shiny. Perfect. There you go, look. That's it, you got it. I didn't know how to make fresh mozzarella. <laughs> we actually had a nice little learning experience. 45 minutes a day. Chef Ramsay's idea to make fresh mozzarella here is definitely putting a stamp on Trobianos. It's something that people are going to remember, people are going to come for. With a number of bookings for Friday night, Gordon decides it's an opportune time to implement another one of his changes. OK, tonight, take down that sign. <laughs> the early bird's finished. You don't need it. You're running up the restaurant. Not a retirement home. Let's go. Now that the early bird menu is a thing of the past, Gordon introduces pasta and mozzarella specials to the dinner service. OK, spaghetti lobster. I don't want it flooded with a heavy coating of tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah and over here, homemade fresh mozzarella, yes, with caramelized red onions, escarole, bang. Beautiful. All right, two nice specials, yeah? OK, good. Hello, ladies. Going into dinner service, I'm real nervous. I got this buzz going on. We got a lot of things on the line here. So you want a mozzarella special? Yeah, you, you can bring them out with the appetizers here. Thank you. Two more specials. Taste, 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 yeah? Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking sauce or a breadcrumb. You taste, yes? We're looking good, looking good, looking good. Come on. The mozzarella is fresh. They actually milk the cow themselves. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's delicious. Delicious. Mike, spinach ravioli, lots of ravioli. Eliminating our early bird special is a lot more difficult. We have a lot more dishes to prepare for. I need the lobster special. We need to hurry up. Please. Let's go. Come on, go, 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 go. Anthony, look at me. Taste. You fucking taste. Yes, chef. I gotta watch you. Yeah. I'm probably gonna make a big sign. I think Anthony needs it saying you have to taste the food before it goes out or I'll kick his ass. Okay, we're coming, we're coming. Here we go, here we go. Go. Mike, we got a side of linguine, garlic, and oil coming up. Nine and ten, right after another. It's busy. 
This guy's getting absolutely slammed, but he can move up. He's definitely got talent, but there's one thing this guy hasn't done is taste a thing. From a chef's point of view, how can you serve food out to the customers and not taste anything? Unacceptable. Beyond fucking belief. Now I'm locked out. While Anthony might not be tasting his food, the customers are. I mean, it's all right, you know, it's all right. And they're not impressed. It's all overcooked. Yes. Special stuff. Right, yeah, it's dry. It seems like it's been around, not made fresh. Another, another fettuccine? Yes, please. And he wants to look at the menu, so get him two menus. Anthony, yes. table 17, they're complaining yes. about their food, saying it's, this is too dry. There's two more gentlemen said the same thing, so they're going to look at something else. You got to fucking kidding me. Anthony, you got to taste this food. Come on. Now, we're playing games here. We're in the business over here. We're getting killed right now. Falling behind big time. It's an hour into dinner service, and a kitchen that is not used to being busy is starting to crumble. All right, it's 25 minutes away. By the time we go, I don't have to go to bed too. <laughs> Where's my potatoes? <laughs> oh, hey, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Anthony was definitely getting his ass kicked tonight. Please get it out. Come on. The food was taking too long. People were scrambling because they were trying to rush. Go, 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 go. Hurry up. Oh, fuck. Something's burning. Fire. Oh, my God. That's not good. Joe. Anthony. Oh, fuck no. With the kitchen already running behind, Michael's burnt entree has brought the dinner service to a grinding halt. Anthony! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Hold up, hold up. Jesus Christ. We'll regroup here, we'll regroup, okay? On a night filled with more setbacks than successes, Anthony is trying to salvage the evening by pleasing the remaining customers. It's like nothing. I'm ashamed of uh, myself, and I didn't think it was as bad as the clientele found it to be. You know, could be, I guess, blinders that I was wearing. You're not fucking pissed I am. They think tonight was a disaster. You know, it's depressing. And I know we have to change things, I just don't know what to do. Oh, oh my God. Can I have seltzer, please, with the wine? What's the matter? Can you please leave me alone? Please, I'm, I'm begging you to leave me alone. Tiffany and I's relationship has been rocky. The stress that we've been through over the past three years has definitely proved to be the breaking point. If the restaurant were to fail, maybe we don't move on. Maybe that's the end of our road. My God. OK. Tonight didn't go by without its problems. Anthony, from the first plate that left your kitchen to the last plate, you didn't taste a fucking thing. You can't be that fucking arrogant. It was a travesty. That is your fucking job. And the minute you don't do that, don't call yourself a chef. I never really tasted things beforehand. Never thought it was necessary. I guess that just comes with the cocky and the arrogance of me. You have got to taste. If you're not tasting it, what are the customers experiencing? You know, Anthony should be tasting his food. He should know why the clientele is complaining. It's just hurting my business, and it's hurting my family. Samora, we have to be different, Anthony. It separates you from being average to something quite special. If you thought tonight was busy, whew, hey, God help you, because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. I know it's late. Get some sleep. A big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good night. I feel like it can't get any worse than it is now. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for everybody. In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Trobiano's stodgy interior. Good morning. Good morning. Right, big day today. Relaunch yes. day. A lot of changes. You didn't like this place when I first arrived. Yeah? You didn't like the decor, didn't like the lighting, and it was bland. Are you ready for a change? Yes. Let's go. Come through. Oh, Come through. My God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh my God, holy shit! It's warm, yes. I couldn't believe what I seen. I was definitely in the wrong place. I was dreaming. 
Everything was unbelievable. The chairs, the, the table forts, the boots. I mean, everywhere you look was beautiful. Oh, look at this! Oh. That's Italy on there, yes? Oh. You're running an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna have some authentic Italian pictures on the wall. I used to hate this place, I used to hate coming in here, but now with the new decor, everything just goes really well together. So everything is just perfect. It's romantic, it's warm, and more importantly, it's sexy. This is great. <laughs> Look at this! That is a mozzarella bar. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you happy? Happy is good man. Good man, good man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Come here. No, I'm happy, I'm like crying. I, know, I, know, I, know, I, know. I just can't believe it, I can't. It's more than I've ever, ever expected. It's beautiful. It's a total fresh start. You know, we're, we're going to take from today and just keep moving forward. OK, good. The menu, absolutely crucial. We've condensed it, and it's simple and rustic. Oh, oh my gosh. God. OK, no more salmon and bolognese sauce. It's authentic. Portions have been trimmed, and they're sensible portions. He showed us the menu. Wow. It was downsized. The prices were better. It's beautiful. It's all in place now. Tonight is where it's got to work. I'm a little nervous for Anthony. This is where he has to show what he's made of, so hopefully he can get that done. Coming up, with relaunch upon them, Trobianos is finally put to the test. The editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. They want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. Can Anthony and the staff rise to the occasion? The most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Or will they crack under the pressure? What's the matter? This was cold in the middle. Uh, Just when it was going perfectly well, a fucking soul comes back. And at the end of service, a shocking surprise that will change this family for years to come. I was shocked. I never expected this in a million years. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone are the shrimp and the chicken, and the dried out salmon. In their place, authentic Italian dishes. The sole, spicy roasted potatoes, rosemary garlic, salmon, the ribeye steak, and the lamb ragu. Homemade mozzarella. We've got hundreds of balls of fresh mozzarella. Right, have a taste. Mm. Wow, this is good. Taste is salad, Joe. That's good, yeah. Oh my God, salad. everything is so delicious. OK, guys, it is going to be a very important night, and it is absolutely crucial we stay together on it. Uh, one more thing. I had a phone call from the editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, they want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. I'm very nervous about tonight. You know, when he just told us about the critic coming, that scares the hell out of me. This is a real chance to put this place on the map. Just under six million people read that magazine per month. And I, I have to make sure Anthony stays on the right track with his cooking, with his tasting of the food. Everything is on the line. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. How are you? Good, good. Hi, how are you? I'm Joe. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, it looks nice. It looks just like a Manhattan to I want to take I just wanted to tell you we're trying something new. We have a mozzarella bar. Here we go. Let's go. So they got one each. So six slices in there, six slices on there. Yeah. Excellent. See? Bang. Yeah, 30 seconds, $80. Right. Off you go. Gotcha. There's one for you and one for you. What? This, is, this is delicious, though. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, for four. Can't believe how well this has gone. This is unbelievable. It's extraordinary. I'm going to fill up on the appetizer. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, follow him behind with chicken parm. You got one ragu coming up. You tasting the food? Please tell me you taste it. Taste the fucking stuff, man. It's very important to keep the standards high. We have to impress a lot of people. We got a lot of things on the line here. No, I want to make sure they're tasting the shit. I got to watch them now. With Trobianos busier than it has been in years, the pressure is now on Anthony to keep up with the orders. But his staff must come through for him as well. Four. Kevin, table four. I have no idea what that is, bro. See, well, yeah, with vegetables, sorry. Danny, I have two 16s. Does not make sense, buddy. What's going on here? The wait staff here is killing me. Anthony, you can't read the fucking thing. Give it back to him, yeah? Yes. Here, take them, rewrite it right here. Quick, Kevin. Got to get these tickets sorted, otherwise you're going to get fucked in 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. While Anthony gets the staff in line... Are they finished with it? So is it fired right away? I need to know. Joe scans the dining room looking for the Bon Appetit table. Any sign of Bon Appetit yet? Yeah, oh, yeah good. Eyes open, yeah? Tony? Yes, sir. Start pushing out these entrees now, yeah? Yes, you're on top of it now. Just stay on top of it, yeah? How we doing, baby? Done? Yeah. That's good. 
All right, enjoy. Oh, wow. Now, why can't I make fish like this? Please watch that. Yeah, potential, yeah? Potential critic, yes? This and this, very nice. Go, 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 go. That's sweet. Is it really? I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. Excuse me? Yes, what's the matter? This what's is wrong? cold in the middle. What table is that? Ten. Table off. 10. Oh, shit. Hey, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking soul comes back. When the dish came back, the only thing that was running through my head was whether it was the Bon Appetit table. The traditional stuff is very good. Yeah, chicken parmesan, very good. We want all the pastas, the pork chops, lamb, to give everybody a little taste. You wanted one of each? Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. How do you know it's them? Uh, they ordered everything on the menu. And they're asking questions. They're asking questions. They're ordering a lot of wine. That is definitely a food critic. Anthony, table nine. It's six people. Yes. One of them, I think, is the critic. Step it up, yeah? Yes. Bounce back, come on. Let's go. OK, we're going to do table nine, a very, very, very important table. All right, here we go. Three minutes on the pasta, Tony. Looking good, looking good. Anthony, yeah, what's that risotto, yes? Yes, chef, yes. Hey, the most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Table nine, risotto and ragu. I need your second bus boy, please. Quickly. Nine, please. Wow. That looks great. Everything's on the line tonight. And if we don't make it, then, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. That looks lovely. It's the relaunch dinner, and Tiffany has just delivered entrees to the editor in chief of Bon Appetit. Now all the family can do is hope. I'm very nervous about the critics. I really do think that my business is at stake tonight. It's either going to make us or break us. I have a taste of the fish, Victoria. The fish and the chicken are really winners. Thank you. And it's not overcooked. No, it was nicely cooked. And it's good. Asking lots of questions, and more importantly, they're passing food round, which is a great sign. Yep. Not happy with it, you don't pass it. How is the bash? You like it? Yeah. Very good, right? Yes. Yeah. That was a nice recommendation. Good, yeah. thank you. Any complaints? No, no complaints at all. It's great that they're here, you know that. Huh? It's fantastic. It's amazing. No, it's a dream. Five. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. I was at an all-time high with Bon Appetit, knowing that if this positive review comes out, that it's going to put Trobianos above and beyond where we ever imagined. With a wealth of satisfied customers and a good response from Bon Appetit, Trobiano's relaunch is a success. But Chef Ramsay knew that Anthony still had some unfinished business. The restaurant's on his way. Tonight proved that. But there's one more thing. Look at this. <sighs> Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Make an honest woman of her. <sighs> Shaken. This is unbelievable. This is coming from you? Yeah. To us? You've forgotten about it. And if there's one thing that's missing, it's that. And I know, personally, how long you've been putting it off because of the pressure from the restaurant. That is going to put an end to it, OK? Yeah, speechless. Thank you. Get up there. Stand strong. Tiffany's a great girl. She's put up with me for the past three years. There was no better time than tonight to go ahead with this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chef patron, Anthony Tomriano. I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you can see we've come a long way, thanks to uh, Chef Ramsay here. And we've moved in such a positive direction that there's just one thing in my life that, that hasn't been official. Tiffany? shocked that Anthony proposed to me in front of everybody. It was just incredible. I never expected this in a million years. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> it totally touched me to see Anthony propose to Tiffany, and I know this is what he's wanted. It's just unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You better make my daughter happy. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll fucking kick your ass. <laughs>
I have one more surprise for both of you. I've arranged for both of you to get married tonight. <laughs> We were just totally shocked. With all the excitement of everything else going on, to top it off with a wedding? Come on. I thought I was gonna die. Right? <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. I love Anthony. I've been waiting for this for six years. We have a new life to start, so everything should just fall into place now. Tiffany and Anthony have come together to proclaim their undying love through the celebration of their marriage. I am filled with so many emotions. It was an amazing night. Son-in-law. It's unbelievable. There's no other word to describe all of this, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this family has been a pleasure to work with. Chef Ramsey did definitely save our lives. you got to be kidding me. If he didn't come here, Six months from now, we've probably been closed. I'm grateful, my family's grateful, and I hope this is a new beginning for all of us. Wow, amazing. I've seen many a dream turn into a nightmare. Tonight, a nightmare turned into a beautiful dream. <laughs> <laughs>